Hi, I'm Mead, and you're watching Photo Learningism. This video has been a long time coming, and I've been trying to get to it for a while, but we're here. We're going to do it. Premiere Pro versus KDEN Live. Can they stand up to each other? Let's find out right now. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learning and thank you so much for joining in. We do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning so that you can know about the different technologies and tools and approaches out there and connect us all together and hopefully share our experiences and make each other stronger and better for it and connect us up with resources that can just improve the way we do things. So thank you so much for joining in. Today, we are going to look at Premiere Pro versus KDEN Live. If you're not familiar with KDEN Live, that is an open source tool, which I would consider comparable to Premiere Pro. We'll look at them right now. Um, but that is coming from the open source community from the KDE group, and Premiere Pro is obviously coming from Adobe. So those are the two camps that we're looking at right now. Premiere Pro is strictly a, a commercial product, meaning that you must purchase a re re recurring perpetual license <laughs> to make use of it. Um, Kden Live is just perpetually free as long as the KDE group um, offers generously their time to keep that up. So two different things. Looking at these, again, comparing them side by side, they both support a lot of core stuff. You can click and drag into them, and really that that's true of, of any of the formats that you'd expect. Uh, if I were to drag in, I'm going to do an MP4 here and drop that in. That's very seamlessly imported. If I drop over here to Kden Live. I can do the same thing, same idea. So that's all very clean and uh, very intuitive. Same there. They both support graphics. They both support audio and various operations of those. They both support uh, pings, PNGs on the graphical front, and it recognizes the transparency layer for both of those, um, which I can show you here. Uh, I brought in my own logo, which you can see there. Those are my feet. <laughs> and Kden Live did the same thing over here where we can see my logo. Uh, so again, natively supports that. Nothing special you have to do to get it to recognize that information. Uh, both do support timeline editing, as you can see between the two, where it's very easy to lay out things in multi-layer, either audio or video. Same for Premiere here, where they're very obviously labeled. It's very easy to add new tracks uh, whether you're in the audio or video realm of the timeline, those are both very equally matched in that regard, uh, where you can simply do that. A couple clicks. So, again, those pieces of the interface are very similar, obviously very critical because you want to know that it supports those things, and that's about where the similarities will, will start to split apart a little bit, and let's dissect them here, all right? So I want to look, first of all, at the idea of titles, um, because that's becoming an increasingly more important thing. I know obviously it's a video editor, you want to edit a video, we'll get there, I promise. But titles are becoming more of like this, this new artistic expression within videos. And the controls of that, I, I think, are becoming more and more important. Um, in Premiere, it does have that stuff. Uh, the title tool is right here. It is actually really easy to craft a brand new title. Uh, I'm clicking that on and I'm just going to find a space here. And let's say that I want to create a title right here in this part of the screen. I can type right into it. Adding some new stuff. That's it. All right. Any effect controls for that text uh, are here. And by the way, this does have different uh, workspaces, which, you know, that could work for you depending on what you're trying to do. I've found that the effects workspace is just the most intuitive for me, but play around with that, see what you think. Um, side note there. So that is really clean, really easy. I can flip back to the selector tool and you can see how this allows me to do some in-frame adjustment. I can relocate it. If I wanted to do some actual animation with this graphic, it's it's all spelled out right here. I could do that numerically or by click and drag. Um, this this should be really familiar if you're into After Effects and really the last few versions of Premiere as well, because that's how they handled it, where you can 
flip on the clock, which is the indicator to say you actually want to do keyframes in animation. And the controls here are really intuitive about adding in keyframes wherever you are and making those adjustments. Um, so that part was, was really, you know, that, that, that's really straightforward. It's actually not all that different in KDN Live, although this part, it irks me a little bit <laughs> in that it can still offer that functionality of we're going to add another clip in here. It's not a tool that's down here. You have to either right click or I believe it's under here under project, add title clip, either of those ways. And this is kind of simulating a screen. This is like the old way of doing it in Premiere. Uh, where you can have like a pseudo screen and you can type out what you want and then you can drag that around and you have all your controls over here to the right where you can modify and play with that, change the font, all those you know typical things. So that is not the greatest um, and then again I have to drag that onto the timeline when I'm done so we can see it. Um, and mess around with that there. What is kind of cool here though is um, once I add transform to it, I do get that same functionality of do I want to manipulate this right on the viewer here? That I can do once I've applied a transform to it. You could also do that again just by clicking back into the text layer and moving it. It'd just be nice to have it right here. Uh, Premiere did that very well where you just you click where you want it and you away you go. So titles, again, the controls are there. The effect controls um, specifically for the layer are here. They pop into their own space. Um, and in this case, I had to add the transform effect for this to actually do anything. And from there, you can add keyframes similar to Premiere and um, same kind of actually almost almost the same kind of interface here of, of adding and changing things so you don't have to flip it on with the clock um, so that might be simpler to understand um, but again the approach is very very similar so you can actually if you're familiar with one it should port over very easily if you're curious to try the other one so that's kind of the timeline and, and effects control interface as well just to kind of tie that in um, so yes the one area where I feel like could have been a really big plus here for Premiere is that keeping in line with this idea of adding in text and being able to manipulate it right on the screen, right on the, the viewer here, I don't understand why they do, do the same thing with animating graphics. If I look at my graphic here, I cannot manipulate that on the viewer space. And I feel like that's kind of a missed opportunity because they've obviously got the technology. <laughs> I, I can do it here. It supports layers. So I don't understand why that wasn't applied here. To, to do it, I have to go into the effect controls and I have to manipulate the position over here. And that, that's a little counterintuitive. I actually had to go look up and figure out how to do it because it just wasn't coming to me by playing around with it. Um, so that, again, that seems like a drop ball. You can do it. You can absolutely accomplish and, and very finely point to what you want to do. You can even animate all this stuff again, which again, the effect controls are there. Same idea as adding keyframes and such. But it's just, it's not as clear as it could have been. Whereas in Kaden Live, Again, once we go to our graphic here and we tack on the transform layer, again, right click, this is very, very easy and clean, tack on the transform, I can do it right here. I can manipulate it right on the viewer. So it leaves you with the question, why, why wasn't that built into Premiere? The, the, the tool is, is so well developed in all, in all these other ways. Why not that? So I won't dwell on that, but it just it was it kind of blew my mind a little bit why they didn't include that kind of control there. So that is a big plus for Caden Live, um, and I'll leave that out there. Another plus here, while it happened to be in Caden Live, is when you're editing, and it used to be this way in Premiere. I'm not sure when they dropped it off, 
but it's really intuitive to come down here as an editing practice, put the, uh, the playback marker where you want it, and I can right click and say split it right there. And I can perform my edits right in timeline, which for me is really efficient, really, really smooth. Somewhere, somehow, that approach disappeared from Premiere. And, and I don't understand why, because if I go here and right click, I just don't see that option about being able to cut where I am. I actually have to go into the razor tool, which, by the way, if you're thinking about this in terms of film, I get that, very clever, but looking at this like as a quick glance, that didn't say cut or edit to me. That just that took a few thought cycles to figure that out. And then from there, yeah, okay, I can figure that out. And, and now I have to go back to my selector and, and I can make the work and edits that I want to do. But the interface, I feel like, is stronger in Kden Live. I, I feel like the community development really shone through, really had a good strength in how their interface was designed. Premiere Pro, again, very functional offers a ton of features, offers a ton of things. This is, again, another kind of, yeah, you know, in Premiere Pro. <laughs> so we've looked at the timeline editing. Uh, we've looked at uh, how the effect uh, controls work. And again, it's very similar for audio type stuff where you have to apply different kinds of controls to audio, even for a volume. That's the same between the two interfaces. Same idea, I won't belabor that point. Um, one thing that is really cool that I want to highlight in Premiere uh, that is like a wow type thing is they have these new ideas here, uh, not just projects, which is what we're working on in both both tools here. They have something called a production, which I won't build out so much because it's just, I'll explain it. That is essentially a collection of projects. So it's like you're thinking about this in terms of a larger picture <laughs> uh, where you could build a collection of projects into a larger production. I thought that was a very inventive kind of way to approach this. So you could work on that. You could actually have multiple projects open and interchange and more easily exchange bits and pieces from it. So that's a really cool idea. And the other part of this is team project, which that is again, another very innovative thing, which I do not see in Caden Live. And honestly, there may not be a lot of call for that because a lot of the, uh, uh, the functionality I think is geared toward individual contributors, but the team project idea is leveraging the flexibility of the cloud. So I could be editing the same project with a coworker in Australia, in England, in Africa, in Antarctica, as long as there's internet, and we could all be working on the same project collaboratively at the same time. It will resolve editing conflicts in real time. It'll give you the opportunity to work on those, which is really fascinating. I wish I had a good way to demo that right now. It's just me right now. But uh, know that that functionality is built in. And for that, I really got to say that's that's excellent innovation. That's great thinking towards your audience, um, towards the audience for uh, the, the premier use case and that they're thinking big picture, high production, uh, high availability. And that was very innovative to see. So know that that's there if that's where you're coming from this, or if that's where you, the place you expect to get to, that this, this could offer you that functionality. Um, so that's really kind of a quick, very, very high level look at things. There's a ton of different adjustments and effects. Um, the quick look through did kind of seem like Premiere was stronger for things like color control. Uh, not to say that they're not in Kden Live, it's just they feel a little bit more basic. And for a lot of things, you're probably going to get 99% of what you're looking for from the few that I see that are here in KDN Live versus the ones that are in Premiere. And very often I have to say that while these controls, they are meant to achieve different things, like when you're working on them, there's creative ways to use them to get what you're after. Maybe not the most elegant and best ways, but the solutions are there. All right. So. Bringing this back out to the top again, all right, this is Kden Live and Premiere Pro. And the biggest, biggest difference is that Premiere Pro is, ten, is designed towards a commercial audience. Kden Live is designed towards the open source community approach. So Kden Live is obviously free of charge. Premiere Pro does cost you something, but you do get the benefit of some of these really 
big corporate features, which uh, might, might be attractive to you. So I hope that helps to kind of get your feet wet a little bit to kind of see some of those initial comparison differences. And this is not a, uh, I prefer this versus that. Um, I have used both these things. I used Premiere back in college and when it was in 5.1, I know that's a long time ago, but I do have roots in that and I do understand how it was originally designed coming up to today. So I'm not trying to come at this from my preference. I'm trying to honestly lay out the playing field here so you can understand the differences. Try them out if you like, and which I would encourage you to do anyway and find what works best for you, all right? So if this was helpful, please consider giving me a thumbs up to let me know it was helpful. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the other awesome stuff that we've done and will do in the future. And I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Take care. And leave a comment. Leave a comment. Comments are great. I love the discussion. We all help each other. It's wonderful. Leave a comment and watch some movies. They're right there. Thanks.